Good morning, students. Today we are going to start the topics of second semester. The first chapter is phylum core data. And coming to how is the origin of that word core data? Uh, coda. Coda means uh, string or core. Data means beer. So from this we can understand that this group, uh, this phylum includes those organisms which are having a cord like structure uh, in common for they all. Okay. In phylum core data, uh, so far 65,000 extant species. Extant means that is uh, existing present. Uh, extant species are there and uh, several extinct species also there. Then coming to its diagnostic features. Diagnostic features of phylum core data is very very important for your examinations. It is a uh, usual question for, you know, for your university examination. So it is very very important. Diagnostic features of uh, phylum core data. First uh, diagnostic feature is about a uh, notochord. Um, the origin of this term, it originated from Greek and uh, Latin. Uh, from Greek, that noton, that part emerge and it means back and coda. Coda uh, is a word in Latin that means cord. So, in the back side, a cord like structure is present. And so, uh, not a code is someone, a code like st structure uh, that is uh, usually present in the back of those uh, code, code data um, or all core data. Uh, okay, that's about the origin of this term. Then, what is the definition? How can we give a definition for this not a code? Notochord means it is a solid flexible rod. Solid flexible rod. Solid flexible rod uh, located just below the nerve cord. This is the nerve cord. Suppose this is the nerve cord. Position. What about the position? Slice just below the nerve cord. It is a solid one and a flexible one, flexible rod. Okay, I will show you uh, its image. And here in this picture, we can see that this is the notochord. And uh, the above, that uh, black, dark um, rod like structure is the uh, neural cord or um, nerve cord. So, an autocode is seen below the nerve code uh, in the form of a solid flexible code. Okay. Uh, it is formed. How it is formed of? It is formed of its picture is shown here. Um, some disc shaped cells. Disc shaped cells. Um, these cells are seen in its inner side. And these disc shaped cells are covered by a three layers, three layers of a sheath. Three sheath is covering this disc shaped cells. So that is about its formation, its composition. Formed of large disc shaped cells. Its name is notochordal cells. And it is covered by a three layer. One, two, three. Three layered sheath. Okay. Um, then what's the function? Function of uh, this notochord. It gives support just like our vertebral column. It gives support to the body and also give a space for the attachment of muscles. Then what about its transition? Transition means uh, what change is happening to this notochord uh, as uh, evolution happened as it moves from um, higher strata of organisms. Uh, as moves on to higher order organism, higher form of organisms, this notochord is replaced by vertebral column. So, only primitive organisms used to retain this notochord uh, in their entire life. Next, 
Next diagnostic feature is dorsal tubular nerve cord. Nerve cord. Uh, just mention you along with the notochord. cord. So we are going to understand more about that. Uh, so first is a definition. Now what is a nerve cord? It is a dorsal. We know that it is dorsally placed. Dorsal hollow fluid filled tube. Dorsal and hollow and it is fluid filled tube. As position also we know that it is uh, seen um, in the um, very dorsal side above the uh, notochord. And what about its persistence? Persistence may uh, it's in vertebrates. Uh, it uh, then later modified to brain and spinal cord. I will show you an image. Oh, it's a uh, um, nerve cord, dorsal tubular nerve cord. This is a black black one. Then coming to um, next diagnostic feature that is pharyngeal gill slits or clefts. Pharyngeal gill slits. Gills. Gills we are very familiar. Um, where we are dissecting or cutting the fish we can very clearly see the gills. Gills are the structures that help in respiration. Okay. Then pharyngeal gill slits or clefts is the next third diagnostic features of cordy. What is this? Pharyngeal gill slits. Ah, pharyngeal gill slits are actually paired openings. Paired openings. They are paired openings leading from pharynx to the exterior. It is an opening that uh, opens the interior area of pharynx to outside. So, that is the pharyngeal gill slits. What, what about its persistence? In all chordates, in any time of its life cycle, uh, it will show. Uh, the gill, um, sorry, gill clips or uh, this pharyngeal gill slits. Any any time of its life cycle, all chordates will show that structure. In aquatic forms like fishes, it is converted to the normal usual gills. And uh, in primitive forms, primitive forms, it functions as a filter feeding system. Filter feeding system means while they are taking water. Uh, or some um, maybe usually water water uh, um, towards its body it can filter out the whatever uh, food particles that present in that water for its feeding purpose so it has the form of a filter also some primitive forms use this pharyngeal gill slits and coming to terrestrial chordates um, it is only present in its embryonic stages terrestrial chordates in the case of ter terrestrial chordates we are all coming under this class, terrestrial chordates. The next diagnostic feature is post anal tail. Post anal tail means what? It is a muscular extension beyond the anus. Beyond the anus portion, we see there is a structure, maybe this is the anus. Uh, this is a muscular extension. This extension is called the post anal tail. It is devoid of any type of viscera. Viscera means any type of internal or organelles or silo. But only blood vessels are present. Blood vessels only are present. Uh, that is about post anal tail. I will show you this image. This is the post anal tail. Fleshy extension. Um, what is the function? In aquatic animals, it uh, stands as a locomotor organ. In human, uh, it is uh, only a vestigial. Vestigial means structure is present, but it is not, uh, it's not uh, having any function in uh, the body of humans. Uh, that is coccyx. Coccyx is a uh, modified, evolved uh, form of post anal tail. I will show you its image. This is a coccyx, coccyx, this tip portion of our vertebral column. This is a, a vestigial structure that is um, um, in uh, lower forms. Uh, it is the postanal, it stands as a postanal tail. But coming to humans, it is it becomes vestigial and it's called coccyx. Okay. Next slide. Other chordate characters. Um, till here we are uh, telling or talking about the diagnostic very important significant um, uh, features which is uh, for designating any organ, organ, organism to a chordate. They should possess all uh, the above mentioned uh, characters, diagnostic features. Then now onwards we are talking about 
other coded characters that are used to present in codings. First one is endostyle. Endostyle we can see here. Endostyle is modified. Uh, later it is evolved from the thyroid gland in higher forms. Um, the endostyle it is seen in the pharyngeal floor, in the floor of the pharynx. And what is its role? It secretes mucus. And what is the function? Uh, that mucus traps the food particles that enters the pharynx from the mouth. And this uh, endostyle is found in protocordates and uh, lambrae larvae. They are all primitive cordates, lower form of cordates. And uh, it secretes some iodinated proteins just like uh, our um, evolved thyroid gland. So that's why it is telling that this endostyle is homologous, similar to the iodine hormone secreting thyroid gland um, in other lambrae and uh, in other vertebrates. This thyroid gland, we know that it is found in common in um, higher forms. And this thyroid gland uh, is a structure similar to the endostyle that is present in the lower forms. Then coming to uh, another feature that is about the ventral heart. Ventral heart, it is present in all cordates. And uh, what about its position? It is located uh, below the alimentary canal. It is located below the alimentary canal. We know that is the digestive tract and below the alimentary canal the ventral heart is located and direction of blood flow uh, the, um, dorsally and uh, means when uh, dorsally is uh, direction is from anterior to posterior direction and ventrally um, what's the uh, direction of flow of blood in ventral heart posterior to anterior it's uh, some point regarding the direction of blood flow in ventral heart Next point is red blood cells. Red blood cells means red blood cells. As the name implies, it is red. What is the uh, reason for becoming red? Due to the presence of hemoglobin. As hemoglobin is present in RBC. RBC means red blood cells. It appears red. Uh, but in amphioxus, it is a type of cordy. Uh, colorless blood is present. Because it does not have any type of pigment. So, oh, from this we understand that. Uh, any blood cells, if it uh, appeared in color form, uh, it is mainly because of the pigment that present in that uh, blood cell. If uh, no pigments are present, then that blood will appear colorless. Next, we are going to hepatic portal circulation. Hepatic portal circulation means it's a type of circulation starts from intestine. Then pass to the uh, joint to form. Um, from the intestine, yes, so much the capillaries. Capillaries, they, they unite to form a single vein that is called the hepatic portal vein. Then it pass to liver and from the liver it is um, joining with the heart. Uh, connecting the heart. I will show you this image. Uh, from the intestine in the form of capillaries, it emerged and uh, unite to form hepatic portal vein and it moves to the liver and then pass to the heart. It's a hepatic portal um, circulation. Then are the four limbs. Four limbs is another feature feature of cordates. Um, above uh, the, the above the fishes that phylum all the uh, most of the uh, gansoms um, possess four limbs and hind limbs four limbs means um, anterior limbs and hind limbs means back limbs but um, in, in the case of aphid and amphibian aphid and amphibians and snakes this four limbs are absent in the case of fishes the four limbs exist in the form of pectoral and pelvic fin and in the case of amphioxus, it exists in the form of metaplural uh, folds. Metaplural folds are certain type of folds that present in the floor. Floor is its body wall. I will show you that uh, here. If we can, ventral side of amphi. This is amphioxus. Ventral side of its body uh, possess so many um, foldings. That folded skin is called metal metaplural. Fall. It is a um, um, what, uh, modification of falling. Then characters shared with the higher vertebr invertebrates. So higher invertebrates have some characters that is present in uh, this chordate also. Which are those characters? 
bilateral symmetry bilateral symmetry we have already learned in first sum uh, first sum by means if uh, the body of organism is uh, cut through one plane one central plane we will get equal halves bilateral uh, symmetry uh, i will show you that this is bilateral and then radial means uh, um, any plane if we cut that organism through any plane through a central axis we will get uh, equal halves that means radial and in the case of sponge there is no symmetry so uh, two different symmetry is showing in by using this picture then triploblastic condition triploblastic condition also we know that three layered condition uh, ectodome endodome mesodome ectodome uh, mesodome and endodome this is the digestive cavity a cephalization means anterior differentiation of the nerve cord or um, body of the organism in the form of a head. Uh, that is cephalization. Demarcation is uh, for, um, forming in the form of a head. Coelom means body cavity. Coelom uh, uh, in the last sum we have learned that there are true coelom and pseudo coelom. True coelom uh, developed from um, mesodom yeah, it starts or begins as a split or a um, gap inside the mesodom itself and then uh, it gives us its uh, size and finally form a uh, fully formed coelom that is uh, uh, true coelom pseudo coelom is not uh, entirely forming inside the mesodom and uh, um, it's uh, one side is covered by mesodom is one and another side is uh, uh, covered by uh, what the, uh, an endodo, endodo, that's it. That's the pseudo silo. I will show you that picture. Uh, not, it is not a picture, it's a video, small video. Formation of silom, I will show here. So body cavity. This is a mesodome. Inside the mesodome is split, will uh, form, and then it gradually expands to form a fully developed silo. Uh, uh, and now it become a fully developed coelom and in uh, some other forms like deuterostomes um, a mesodome emerges in the form of pockets and then pinches off from it and then forming a coelom this is a uh, two type of formation two method of formation of coelom ok next uh, organ system organ system is also a um, character that is sharing between higher invertebrates and this caudates Next, we are going to understand about the classification of chordates. Chordates are again classified into th uh, three subphylum. Uh, they are uh, Eurochordata, Cephalochordata and Vertebrata. And this Vertebrata is again classified into Echnatha and Nathostomata. And this, uh, sub, uh, uh, these two subphylum, Eurochordata and Cephalochordata, uh, they are uh, very primitive. So, it is called Protochordates. Another feature of these protocodes are they didn't have a distinct head or brain case. Because of that property they are called a craniata. A means absent. A crania is absent. So it is called a craniata. And also uh, they have a persistent notochord throughout their entire lifespan. So they are called non-vertebrate cordates. Next, we are going to have more um, understanding about all the three subphylum. First one, subphylum Eurocordata. What are the, its peculiarities? Um, its coded characters. Coded characters, we have, what are they that we have already discussed? And those coded characters, uh, whatever it be, uh, have diagnostic features or uh, other coded characters, whatever it be, it is seen only during its larval stage. So, in the case of Eurocordata, coded characters are uh, seen only in larval stage. And adults, coming to adults, it retain only the pharyngeal slits. Coelom, uh, segmentation, all these are absent. Then, pharynx is present but uh, with the ciliated epithelium. Um, pharynx is present in uh, the subphylum. But it is with the ciliated means um, uh, so many cilia are present inside this pharynx. So it is using that pharynx for ciliary mode of feeding. Ciliary mode of feeding means some, some type of filter feeding itself. 
because as water uh, water enters into the uh, body whatever food particles it is filtering filtering and taking inside the body that is ciliary mode of feeding or um, uh, some cilia are present and by the beating of the cilia it creates that water current and that water current enters into the um, into its mouth and it filter all the food particles that is present in that water that can be the ciliary mode of feeding then coming to next subphylum subphylum cephalocodata uh, what is its peculiarity it retain all caudate characters throughout its life that is the uh, important thing it retain it retain all the caudate characters throughout the life it is tiny fish like 23 species are found and uh, its food is microscopic plankton they are also ciliary feeder then next is subphylum vertebrata vertebrata we also come under this subphylum and they are called advanced chordates they possess a vertebral column that means not chord is replaced by a vertebral column a distinct head is present so it's called craniates distinct head is present so it's called craniates next slide This echnada and apostomata. It's the classification of vertebrates. Uh, that echnada means, A means absent, nada means jaws. No jaws. Um, um, that echnadans are again classified into cyclostomata and ostrecoderme. Cyclostomata examples are hackfishes and lambries. These are hackfishes and uh, lambries. Ostracoderme, Ostracoderme, and uh, in this class, almost all fishes uh, that are coming under this class are extinct fishes. The next is Nathostomata. Nathostomata, you can classify into two classes Pisces and Tetrapoda. Uh, Pisces um, is again classified into Placoderme, Chondrichthys, and Ostichthys. Placoderme, Chondrichthys. Or stick this. This black order may uh, include all extinct freshwater fishes. Extinct freshwater fishes. Contrictis. Contrictis consists of cartilage. CC. Contrictis consists of cartilaginous fishes. Or stick this. Or stick this is composed of bony, means hard, uh, hard uh, skeleton the fishes. And then tetrapoda means four uh, limbed. Uh, organisms come, comes under tetrapoda. It includes amphibia, reptilia, apes and mammals. Okay, with this we finish the first chapter in today's section. Thank you.